Okay, moving on to part C, I'll just scroll up and leave part B on. So we have part C. Now we've got to solve an equation. That equation is cosec to the power 4 of theta minus cot to the power 4 of theta is equal to 2 minus cot theta. So we'll just write it in like so. And we've got to solve it for values of theta between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, so uh, this first part, cosec to the power 4 minus cot to the power 4 theta, we saw in part b, was the same as cosec squared theta plus cot squared theta. So I'm going to use that. Substitute in the left hand side. Uh, we therefore get cosec squared theta plus cot squared theta is equal to the 2 minus cot theta on the right. Okay, what we now have is looking to be almost an equation in cot theta. It seems to dominate here. So I'm looking at the cosec squared theta, thinking, can I get this in terms of cot theta? Well, part A asked us to show that cosec squared theta minus cot squared theta was identical to 1. So from that, if we were to rearrange it, cosec squared theta is 1 plus cot squared theta. So I'm going to write 1 plus cot squared theta in here in place of cosec squared theta. Then I've got the plus cot squared theta from that term and it equals 2 minus cot theta. So grouping this together as a quadratic in cot squared theta I get 1 plus 2 cot squared theta equals 2 minus cot theta. And then if I put this term to the front, we'd have 2 cot squared theta. Add cot theta to both sides means that I have plus cot theta here. And then if I subtract 2 from both sides, I'll have 1 take away 2. Leaves me with negative 1. And obviously on this side, I'm left with nothing. So a quadratic then in cot theta, and I would suspect this quadratic is going to factorise, so uh, we'll prepare it with two brackets, like so, equals zero, and at the front of each bracket, two things that multiply together to give two cot squared theta, that would be two cot theta, and a cot theta here, and then looking for two things that multiply together, two numbers that multiply together to give minus one. That's got to be a plus one and a minus one. And so looking at this, I'll put plus one in here. That will give me two cot theta. And then the minus one in here, that will give me minus cot theta. So two cot theta minus cot theta leaves me with the plus cot theta. Okay, so we'll scroll up. And Therefore, what we have now is either this factor equals zero or this factor will equal zero. So therefore, two cot theta minus one would equal zero or the second factor, cot theta plus one, that would equal zero. Okay, rearranging each equation here, we get that cot theta would be equal to a half or cot theta would equal minus 1. Therefore, with this equation, cot theta is 1 over tan theta, so I'm going to write 1 over tan theta equals a half, or this equation will give 1 over tan theta would equal negative 1. So therefore, if we rearrange this equation times both sides by 2 tan theta, times in this side by 2 tan theta would give us 2. 
this side by 2 tan theta would give us just tan theta. So 2 would equal tan theta or tan theta would equal 2. Similarly, on the other side, if we multiply both sides by tan theta and also divide by minus 1, it gives tan theta equals negative 1. Okay, let's move up a little bit more. So, let's consider when tan theta equals 2. So when tan theta equals 2, theta, therefore, theta will equal the inverse tan of 2. And uh, normally when I solve a quadratic, uh, not, sorry, not a quadratic, a trigonometric uh, equation, and I get to this point, I would always want to think about drawing the quadrants. So I draw the quadrants in. You should be familiar with the first quadrant from 0 to 90. All the trig ratios are positive, so that's all in that quadrant. And this one, sine is positive, tan is positive, cos is positive. Okay, so we have the tan of a positive number, and tan is positive then in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. So tan is negative from 90 to 180 and we only want solutions between 90 and 180 so this is clearly not going to be uh, in the required range so therefore uh, not in the required range. Okay, that's that. By the way, if you did inverse tan 2, you'll get 63.424 degrees, which will be the angle in this quadrant. And uh, as I said, uh, we need tan to be positive, And in this quadrant, 90 to 180, it's negative. So we're not going to need that theta. Next, we uh, move on to consider when tan theta is negative 1. So when tan theta is negative 1. Theta, therefore theta, will be the inverse tan of negative 1. I'll put negative 1 in brackets, it'll look better there. Okay, so uh, tan is negative in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. We're only considering angles between 90 and 180, so if I consider drawing a line from here down to there, and I'll just carry the line straight across there, this angle is the same as this angle. Always mark angles to the horizontal line as the same. So the angles that we need, let's just mark uh, them, one, we'll mark one in red, is one angle. This is a possible theta. Uh, there'll also be another one round here as a possible theta, but when I look at it, theta's got to be between 90 and 180, so it's only this one that I require. Okay, so when I press on a calculator inverse tan of negative 1, although we should really know this, hope you do, but if you don't, on a calculator you'll get theta equals minus 45 degrees. Minus 45 degrees refers to this angle in here, a turn from the initial line 0 degrees in a clockwise direction is referred to as a negative angle, so this angle in here is negative 45 degrees. That means this angle over here in size, in magnitude, is 45 degrees. I'll mark that in there. So our red angle theta has to be 180 minus 45 degrees and that gives us 135 degrees. So I'll put a comma here and we have 135 degrees. Well the minus 45 degrees is out of range so our final answer to our, uh, this problem is that therefore theta equals 135 degrees. Okay, so hopefully uh, you understand what I've done and this brings us to the end of question six.